Welcome to the fifth video of this series about object-oriented programming and classes in Python. In this video, you're going to learn about private variables and name mangling. So a private variable is basically a variable that should be considered non-public and should be only accessed from inside the object, okay? And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Let's be clear though, in Python, private variables don't actually exist, meaning we only write them in a certain way by convention to signal that those variables are supposed to be private, but you can still access them from outside an object, even though you shouldn't. So let's change the name of introduction so that we don't inherit it from anything. So new like that, perfect. So let's actually delete this. And here we just return like that, perfect. Then. Let's say that now, instead of writing the whole logic here, which in this case is really simple, we want to have another method to do that. So we want to do something like create string, okay, like that. And then we want to return our string. Let's actually copy from here, like that. We return our string like this, all right. Of course, I need to write self here like that. Then we can call this function in here. So we can do something like self.create introduction string and we can call it perfect. If we leave things like that, we can access both methods like that. Let's leave it like that. So we can do something like print my instance introduction new like this. And then we can do something like print my instance dot create string introduction string like that. So if we run that, you get the same exact thing. But as you don't actually want create introduction string to be accessed like that, you just want to use that inside the class. So you just want to use that here inside of the class. You don't want to use that here. So to signal this, we need to place an underscore at the beginning of the method name. So we need to do something like this underscore and then underscore like that. As I said, you could still use it and that would work. So you could do something like, like that. And this, as you can see, would work. But of course, this is something that you shouldn't do at all. So let's actually delete that. So this could be used for everything, even instance or class attributes, etc. So you could have like a class attribute that is just like private, something like that and something. Okay. So then you would use this just inside of the, of the class and not here. So you wouldn't do something like my class dot private because this, this would work, but it's not supposed to be like that. So this is how you signal other developers, etc., that this should only be used in other methods, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and not outside. Okay. Private variables are actually really important when it comes to properties and especially the getter, the set, and the deleter. But I'm going to talk about this in the next video of the series. Now we're going to talk about name mangling and things get a little more complicated, but still really important to know. So when you have inside a class something that starts with two underscores, it could be a method, an attribute, etc. So let's say something like method, so two underscores like that, one and two. This is replaced under the hood by Python with something like this. So one underscore class name, two underscores method. Okay, so this is this. And the class name is, of course, the name of the class in which the underscore underscore method is defined. So if we add it to class person, for example, we will get something like the score person method. So let's actually delete all of this and create a simple class. So class, my class, like that. And then just the init, init, like this, self, self dot attribute value, like this. So you've got this two underscores attribute. Then we can create an instance. So my instance, my class, simply like that. And if we try to access this attribute using my instance dot underscore underscore attribute like that, which is something that you shouldn't actually do. But if we try to use that attribute error, my class object has no attribute like that. So this is because, as I said, the name is not underscore underscore attribute anymore, but it's something like this. So it's something like my class, because this is the name of the class like that. And this one is called attribute. Okay. So now if we try to actually run this again, we get the actual value. So as self is 
inside of this class, then even though you write it like that, when you need to use it outside the class, you need to use it like that. Within the class, Python actually handles the name automatically, but when you need to call it like that, you need to access it using my class attribute, etc. So this is just an example to demonstrate how the name changes. So name mangling is useful when you want to let subclasses override methods without causing problems with method calls that happen within the class itself. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so we have my class here. We need to just pass for the moment. Then I'm gonna define a new method, my method self. Okay, then I'm just going to return my class method, something like that, perfect. And let's actually print it here. So self my method like this. And now let's actually create another class that inherits from my class, so a subclass. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, please like it and also subscribe to the channel as well so you'll get notified when the next video of the series is published and also leave a comment as well so that I know that you got to this point, okay? So class my, my class child and then I want to inherit from my class, so something like that. And here I want to override my method. So I want to do something like my method self, okay? return my class child method like that so let's now create an instance of this class my instance my class child okay like that and let's actually run it so my class child method so this is returned so as you can see, the call to my method inside the init function actually called the my method of the subclass. So init here, when you call this, actually you're not calling this, but you're calling this one because of course we're using an instance of my class child. So when we call self dot my method inside the init method, since as I said, we have an instance of my class child and not an instance of my class, the my method of the base class is overridden by the one of the child class and we get the string my class child method printed. But let's say that here we want the my method of the main class of the base class to be called at least when we create the instance. So when you create the instance, you want this method to be this one. Okay, not this one. And that's where name mangling comes into play. So instead of using my method directly like this, I'll make a copy and I'm gonna use the two underscores my method is equal to my method like that. And then instead of using this, my method here, I'm using the one with the two underscores like that. Let's actually try to run this. So let's save that and try to run it. And now, as you can see, my class method. So this class, this method here is actually used here. Why? Because of course we made a copy here and we stored it in the underscore underscore my method variable. And of course, when you overwrite it, it doesn't affect the copy, okay? Because you've got this copy, which is this one. When you call my instance, my method, you actually call this one because this overwrites this. But as you've made a copy here, when you actually create the instance, you use the copy, okay? I hope that makes sense. But what if we actually had a my method like this in the subclass as well? So something like this. Okay, let's actually run it and see what we get we still get my class method, but why? So as I've explained to you earlier about the naming, this my method is actually something like my class child, my method, okay? So this is the same as doing this. And the same here, my class like that. So this doesn't override this because Actually, in the background, this has actually this name and this has actually this name. So this is not the same as this and it doesn't override it. So even though they actually look the same because they look the same here, as you can see, they look the same, they actually have different names, so you don't override them. So by using name mangling, you can let subclasses override methods without breaking intraclass method calls like the one in my class. So here we are making an intraclass call. But by using this convention, like that, you can override method without breaking things in here, okay? 
This is something that you are not going to use all the time, but it's something that you need to know because you need to know it to understand other people's code. And also now that you know this, you will be able to use it should you need it. In the next video, you're going to learn how to use properties, how to use the getter, the setter, and the deleter. If the video is already out, it should be on the screen along with a playlist containing all the videos of the series. Also, like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more videos and series like this. And I'll see you soon. Bye.